Again, we'll continue graphing today, but we're going to talk about linear and absolute value inequalities. And I've given you a couple of linear inequalities here. You'll notice the difference between the two. They both have graphs of lines, although one line is dotted and one line is solid. We call these boundary lines. These typically notate a function or some equation of a line. However, what distinguishes the two is this would be strictly greater or strictly less than, whereas this one is greater than or equal to or less than or equal to because of the solid line and the dotted line. I'm not going to get into less than or greater than yet because that will be part of the lesson today. I just want you to know that dotted lines are strictly greater or less. Solid lines are less than or equal to or greater than or equal to. So let's move on. So what I want to do is I want to graph y is greater than 2 fifths x minus 3. So this is just a line. I can go to negative 3 put a dot, go up to over 5, and just for kicks I'm going to go up to over 5 again, and instead of just connecting the dots I'm going to do them in a dotted fashion because this is strictly greater than. Now, you'll notice in our previous graphs that I gave you an example of, there was shading. Shading indicates greater than or less than. So what I typically do is I take and pick a point on either side of the graph. And my point that I pick, we call this a sample point, first of all, is usually zero, zero, because those are pretty quick calculations to make when I'm plugging in zero to an equation. And if I find that zero, zero actually solves or make my, makes my equation true, I know that that is in the solution region. If that sample point zero, zero does not make the inequality true, it's not in that sample region, and it wouldn't get a solution point or a shading. So here I go, plugging in zero, making it less than, or greater than, I'm sorry, two fifths times zero minus three. Two fifths times zero is zero, minus three is negative three. So the question is, is this point zero, zero right here yielding a solution that's true? Well, is zero greater than negative three? Yes. So this is an actual solution point. Therefore, every point in this region is a solution. So we shade the upper region of the graph. Similar problem, just not in slope-intercept form. So let's go ahead and do that. I take the 4x over. By subtracting. I divide by negative 5, but notice when I divide by negative 5, I'm going to flip the inequality. So I have positive 4 fifths now, x minus 3. I go down to 3. I go up 4 over 5. I do it twice just for fun. This time, since it's equal to solid line, and pick a sample point of zero, zero once again. Plug it in, zero, greater than or equal to, four fifths times zero, minus three. Question is, is zero greater than or equal to negative three? It sure is. So once again, my solution point is in my region 
that has all the solutions in it, and I shade towards that. So now we're going to look at an absolute value inequality, and we really do this the same way, and we know in our absolute values we need to identify a H and K, or actually M, sorry, H and K, M is equal to 1, H, you'll notice, since I have to have a minus here, H is equivalent to negative 1, and K is 3. So my translation is negative 1, 3. I move over 1, up 3, put a dot there. I have a slope of 1, so I go up 1, over 1, on both sides. And I can continue that pattern. And I draw a dotted line because it's strictly less than. Next, I need to test the sample point. My sample is always going to be zero, zero. So I plug zero in, get less than the absolute value of zero plus one plus three. Zero is less than four. True statement. And here's zero, zero. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to shade in the region where zero, zero is. And once again, we pretend this goes up forever. And this is up forever. So my shaded region is everything around, if you will, that absolute value graph. And it goes down here for as well. Here's another absolute value graph, a little more complicated. We have a slope equaling negative 3. My h value is 2. My k value is 9. So I know this translates to 9. Move over 2, up 9, put a dot. I do a slope of negative 3. So here's down 3 over 1, down 3 over 1. Down 3 over 1. Once again. And this time I'm going to go solid because it's equal to. Here's my absolute value graph. And now I'm going to pick my sample point once again of 0, 0. You'll notice 0, 0 is on the interior of the absolute value. So now plug in 0 greater than or equal to negative 3 times the absolute value, 0 minus 2 plus 9. So the question is, is 0 greater than or equal to negative 3 minus 2, because that's an absolute value, plus 9, or is 0 greater than or equal to 3? This is false. Therefore, I don't want to shade in this zero, zero region or on the interior of this graph. So I shade, again, everywhere outside the graph. So here's another absolute value graph. Notice it's not in slope-intercept form, so let's go ahead and get it there. We'll take, in this case, the 15 over, so I have 3y greater than absolute value of x minus 15 divide by 3 so I have y greater than or greater than actually I'm not going to put the 3 inside the absolute value because we can't do anything to the inside of an absolute value unless we remove it so I have one third times the absolute value of x minus 5 this gives me an M of one third, an H of zero, and a K of negative five. So my translation is zero, negative five. Therefore, I move down to zero, negative five and put a dot. 
I do a slope of up one over three on either side. I can dotted line that. Pick a sample point of zero zero once again. And say, and I can plug back into the original equation or I can plug into this equation, it doesn't really matter. I'll plug into the original. I have three times zero plus fifteen is greater than the absolute value of zero. So I have 15 is greater than zero. Question is, is that true? The answer is yes. Here's my sample point, which means I'm going to shade on the interior of that absolute value. This one's certainly a little bit different because you'll notice both X and Y are in the absolute value, and I can't do any algebra within that absolute value. And the only way to do any kind of algebra is to remove the absolute value signs. And we know we do that by creating a plus minus equation. So this is a little bit unique. The plus part is 2x minus 5y is greater than or equal to 10. The minus part is negative 2x. Minus 5y is greater than or equal to 10. Neither of these are in slope intercept form, so let's go ahead and do that. This is negative 5y greater than or equal to negative 2x plus 10. Multiply or divide by a negative 5, so I have y flip the sign less than or equal to positive 2 fifths x minus 2. On this side, I'm going to divide by negative 1 first. So in doing that, I have 2x minus 5y. Flip the inequality. It's less than or equal to negative 10. Bring the 2x over. So I have negative 5y less than or equal to negative 2x minus 10. Divide by negative 5, y greater than or equal to 2 fifths x plus 2. So now you'll notice here are the two equations that I need to graph. And when I do this, I go down to 2, go up 2 over 5. Connect the dots. Like so. Pick my sample point of zero, zero. Get zero less than or equal to zero minus two. So zero is less than or equal to negative two. That's false. So I'm going to shade away from my zero, zero sample point. And then in this case, I go up to 2, up 2 over 5, connect the dots. Pick a sample point of 0, 0. And in this case, I get 0 greater than or equal to 2. That's also false. So here's my zero, zero. I don't want to shade towards it because that's not a solution. Shade on the other side. And there's our final graph. Make sure you fill out your lesson summary and do connected problems for chapter 12.